The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome to the x one everyone. I am Rob McConnell, and for the next four hours, I am your host and your guide as together we cross the time-space continuum to this place that I call the x zone It's a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Then the x zone comes to you Monday through Friday from 10 p.m. Eastern until 2 a.m. Eastern, right here on the x zone Broadcast Network, Talk Star Radio Network, Mutual Broadcast Network, iHeart Radio, and Simul Radio and Simul TV. If you'd like to uh, send me a message, very simple, exxon at exxonradiotv.com on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. And to find out about the programming we have available for you 24-7, 365 on the Exxon Broadcast Network, visit www.xzbn.net. My guest this hour, Exxon Nation, is Elizabeth Eagle. She uh, has a BS in Industrial Engineering from North Carolina State University. Her successful uh, supplier quality engineering took her to 65 major subcontractors in the U.S. and U.K. She refers to herself as a rolling stone, rolling stone born under a wandering sky star. And uh, she has uh, lived and traveled all over the world as a communications coordinator for UFO Institute International for 12 years. She has uh, seen and heard a great deal about UFOs and light beings. She looks forward to sharing new information on all who have an open heart and an open mind. Her website is www.livingheartbeings.com. And Elizabeth Eagle, welcome to the Exxon. Thanks. It's very good to be with you. Um, I would just wanted to say um, my website is uh, living, living light beings.com, not living light heart, just to clarify. Okay. Uh, tell me, what is the UFO Institute International? I've never heard of them. Well, you won't hear of them. It's a very small organization started by Lieutenant Colonel Stephen Alexander in 1998, but uh, it never got international. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you, that's why you haven't heard from it uh, about it, and if you do a Google search, you probably won't find it. Okay. Um, what are what were its purposes, and why did it fail? Well, um, it was to have like-minded or interested individuals uh, meet together, talk about their experiences, mm-hmm. and me, me to show uh, them things that I found on the Internet and stories that I've heard. Uh, the reason that it isn't any bigger or didn't grow was a lot of interference uh, with meetings and things like that, like they double book the room or That's the it. Internet wouldn't work or the computer wouldn't work. So I got frustrated, oh. and uh, I might start it back up again. Uh, Steve doesn't do it anymore, but he's uh, passed the mm-hmm. torch on to me. All right, uh, f- let me ask you a very simple question. What are light beings? Light beings are, I believe, energy, plasma life forms, uh, possibly spirits, but they show up in many varied ways, and it's amazing their variety. So um, they communicate with us consciously, and uh, we have photographic evidence to uh, basically prove that and have gotten so many responses from others sending pictures and things uh, that and stories that are extremely interested so that's why i call them light beings because 
Uh, most people just consider orbs the only thing that show up uh, paranormally in photography, but we have such a wide variety that mm -hmm. I'm not sure what else to call them because I do believe they are alive some way, and that's why I call them beings, just like human beings. Now, you talked about photographic evidence. What kind of evidence do you have? Oh, my goodness. Uh, thousands of pictures, uh, l lots of video off my security cameras that prove it, videos from uh, Hollywood movies that have it in them. I zoom in and slow them down, and it's obvious that they're there, and they're, uh, there's something different. They're not dust on the lens. So uh, that's the evidence that I have, plus so many stories from people. I'm considering uh, putting all their comments and stories together in a book. Of mm -hmm. course, they'd be anonymous, but it's fascinating, the information I'm receiving. Why would they be anonymous? Well, in a book, I don't want to publish everybody's name because I wouldn't have permission from all these people's stories. But that would take away credibility of any story that is published if you cannot validate or identify the person who is making the statement. That's true. Unfortunately, a lot of the statements come from people and through my website that just enter their first name. And uh, you might be right about the publishing, so I'm not sure if it's a good idea or not. Mm -hmm. We're just considering it. Now, you said that a lot of the, you had a number of these light beings that you caught on your security cameras. Why do you have security cameras? Oh, somebody was breaking into my house. I guess they call it gaslighting. Uh, one day they would break in and take down pictures, and ne the next time they'd break in, the pictures would reappear. They took locks off my back door. Oh my they goodness. broke my front door window on my front door. Um, so that's why I got the security cameras. And oh. I started out with four, mm -hmm. and they uh, continued to break in. I think they knew where the blank spots in my uh, coverage sure. were. So I got eight cameras. That's the story of how the cameras came to be. All right, why I asked you that, I thought maybe it had something to do about the um, the witnessing or, or you seeing these light beings, and this was one way that you could actually uh, video them. Well, actually, I think that those that were um, bothering me thought that they were going to hurt me long term, but as a result of the cameras, they actually mm -hmm. helped me. I, I didn't do it intentionally to catch them, not not thinking that maybe these security cameras, because of their infrared, would show up. I really didn't think about that, but I'm so grateful that they have, and they show up every single day on the cameras, especially. I go back to my monitor on the security camera, and if there's no orb showing up on any of the eight cameras, I'll yeah. invite them in, and within moments, they appear. All right, so basically what you're doing is is, uh, is catching orbs on your security system? Actually, I've caught orbs, ones that are shaped like rods and move sideways. I've captured ones that look like Dubs mm -hmm. shape shifting, uh, strings shape shifting, orbs and rods together. The rods are jumping, the orbs, orbs are swirling. It's amazing, and I've included that footage uh, in my documentary that I've put out that's, uh, that shows these things. Like to explain it uh, to somebody, of course, it's easy to say, Oh, I've never seen it. I don't believe it. Mm -hmm. But once you put the evidence out there, it's undeniable. Now, have you had these these uh, images validated by by video experts? I don't need to. It's so obvious that they're there, and especially what I catch from Hollywood movies. I don't need an expert to tell me what is real. But wouldn't that help if you had somebody with the proper credentials who could actually take that footage and analyze it in a professional way to validate what you're putting out there? Actually, I could care less about a professional's opinion about what I've captured. Why? Because I know what's real. I know the evidence is, is real and true. It's obvious from the film that I've captured and the film others have captured. It's just totally obvious, and a lot of experts are prejudiced about this kind of pheno phenomena, and there's not been much scientific research on it, and I figure, you know, I, I, could, I really don't care 
uh, because others can draw their own conclusions. Mm -hmm. If they think it's dust on a lens, which it's impossible for many of these pictures, if you've seen my website, or take a double check on it. Um, and that's why I, I'm not drawn to do that. Now, if somebody, some professional approaches me and is interested, um, I would give them the footage or they are welcome to look at my website or my documentaries, my full-length documentary or my shorter videos with the Hollywood stars on my website. Okay, the, uh, the software that you use to zoom in and slow down, how do you manipulate it? Well, I, I'm a computer graphic expert, a videographer, and a photographer, and I've been doing this uh, since I made 19 training videos for IBM, mm -hmm. and I use currently Photoshop and iMovie. That's all I need. Okay. Being a video professional myself and an audio specialist, uh, let me ask you, you know, do you shoot it in high def? What's the frame rate? No, not at all. It's very low tech. Um, I just transfer what I, I film with my cell phone from my security camera I monitors. Uh, I film from my TV monitor what I see in uh, VHS and DVD and other uh, movies. Oh, I see. Uh, I all right, stand by. You and I have to take our break for this uh, segment. Exxon Nation, our guest this hour is Elizabeth Eagle, and her website is www.livinglightbeings.com. And we'll be back on the other side of this commercial break as we continue here in the Exxon with yours truly, Rob McConnell, on the Exxon Broadcast Network, Talk Star Radio Network. We're on iHeartRadio, Simul Radio, Simul TV. And a whole bunch of other networks right around the world. We'll be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling... 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simul TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like X Zone, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world, interactive online network, and much more. Tomorrow's TV today, Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. We live in rapidly shifting times of extreme volatility and uncertainty. Such profound change brings a unique opportunity for the evolution of consciousness. I'm Gwilda Wiecka, host of Mission Evolution Radio Show, a program that explores the latest scientific developments and deepening spiritual truths supporting human evolution. Join me on XZBN.net, where I interview leading experts in science, physics, medicine, spirituality, and more. By applying divergent viewpoints to leading-edge topics, we uncover expansive and evolutionary truth to assist you on your path to enlightenment. More information and past episodes are available at missionevolution.org.
Welcome back, everyone. Elizabeth Eagle is our guest, www.livinglightbeings.com. Elizabeth, how did you become interested in living light, and, and when did all of this begin for you? I've always been interested in the paranormal since I can remember, and I've got pictures from when I was one year old with an angel on my shoulder, but what really started me having the interest was in 1988, uh, at my wedding, a Polaroid was shot, and there's uh, the, a definite light being on the same shoulder. I don't know if it's the same angel. I don't, don't even know if for sure it's an angel. But um, in 2006, I went, I, well, before that, I continued to take lots of pictures, and they showed up increasingly. So I was fascinated and started sharing them with other people and with uh, the people that came to the meetings. And then when I went to Sedona, Arizona, on a six-month spiritual sabbatical, it just exploded the number of pictures I got. And, um, and since then, it's just continued to increase the number of images I capture. Uh, my awareness of uh, orbs and light beings in Hollywood movies was non-existent, so I didn't even know to see them or look for them, and then I went to a movie called The Revenant with Leonardo DiCaprio with my son in a theater, and sure enough, out of this guy's shoulder comes this big white orb and floats down his arm, and I was like, holy Toledo, this is very interesting, and because of that experience, I decided to go back and look at other footage, and I found them in World War II footage, I've, I've found them moving in, in Cuba back in that day, um, so that I just started looking for them and everything that I was watching, and now I can't sit down and watch a movie and relax without jumping up and filming what I'm seeing, rewinding, filming again. So um, that's how it all started. Why do you think you have the ability to see these light beings where other people don't? I really have no clue. It, it's possible because they don't know how to look for them or hadn't even noticed them in their photography or think, you know, that it's dust on the lens or some kind of camera malfunction. I really don't know why I've been gifted with this ability other than the fact that they might have chosen me to be a messenger knowing that I can communicate with people. I know how to do videos. I know how to, you know, write books. I self-publish. There's... There's, and that's maybe the only explanation I can think of, but to be honest, I have no, no idea. Um, is there a connection between, uh, you know, the living lights and, and UFOs? I believe there are, uh, there is, and um, I anything that flies... <laughs> and people don't know about, could be considered a UFO. So, um, and some people on YouTube post pictures with the little orbs flying around and call them UFOs, and I've had uh, UFO sightings. I've done a documentary on one of the sightings I had here in Colorado. Um, so that's, I believe, why uh, there's a connection. And I've seen footage of of the orbs and UFOs around military military missile bases. They disarm missiles. Uh, they show up at times of disaster. Uh, they come when there's a happiness and uh, elevated emotion, whether it be happy or sad emotion. Mm -hmm. So I, that's why I believe that uh, the light beings are connected with the UFOs, especially the rod-shaped ones and the little balls of light. Um, the uh, the UF the lights or the orbs or the light beings that have that have been uh, you know uh, you said around missile silos. Did you see those yourself? I haven't personally seen them, but I've uh, there's a lot of documentation um, and. Let me see. I believe it was 1968 at Malmstrom Air Force Base. They did disarm ten missiles, and I've seen them. So you're talking. Uh, you're meeting. talking about the reports by Captain Robert Salas. I am. Yeah. Also, uh, the tether incident that was filmed from the space shuttle Columbia uh, definitely has 
some kind of light beings um, swarming around the tether that broke away from the space shuttle. Actual NASA footage. Yeah, but NASA and other members of the scientific community dispute that as being anything but any connection with UFOs or extraterrestrials. So who is the public supposed to believe? The scientists, the professionals, or the ufologist? Um, they can believe anybody they choose to. Mm -hmm. and But I know there's a disinformation campaign from the government. How do you know that? How do you know that? Well, they don't talk about what's really happening with the military secret space program. They but, don't tell us about but the that, that's, uh, you know, toxins how, in the chemtrails. Oh, now wait a second. Hold on here. Hold around. on here. Hold on here. Hold on here. First of all, I don't buy the chemtrail stories. I don't buy that. I've talked to many members of the avi- aviation industry, the, uh, the military, government officials who I trust, and a lot of this conspiracy theory is actually maintained by the UFO community because as long as there's a conspiracy in space, anything, uh, I'm sorry, as long as there's a conspiracy in place or the story of a cover-up, anything can be, well, you know, the, what we saw is real. The government is, is suppressing the information. So how do people know who to believe and who not to believe? I guess that's my question. I can't answer that question. I can't answer why people believe the Earth was created in seven days. I can't answer uh, that pl- people believe that 9-11 actually was something from other than American terrorists. I oh, come on. Come on of- now. Come on. You're making a lot of wild statements here. Of course. And I've read Project Censored every year, which is the top 25 stories that never hit the media. Very oh, well documented. Come on. I, I- have you ever been a member of the media? Yes. I mean, a cre- I, I mean, accredited on TV media for two and a half years in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. I've been involved with uh, several appearances on TV. Oh, okay, so, so how uh, can how I can... know how censored things are in the United States? It's actually worse than the censorship in Saudi Arabia, in my opinion. Okay, somebody listening tonight. First time listening to this show, here's you talking about government conspiracies, chemtrails, light beings, UFOs. And then they start questioning their own sanity, their own belief system. They go to the Internet, and there's all this garbage all over the Internet. You know, in my opinion, the the Internet is the largest septic tank that God ever created because there's more crap in it than anything else. So how is a person supposed to draw that line between fact and fiction? Well, I'm not exactly sure why, you, why you're challenging my beliefs and my experiences and the Internet, because that's not the kind of questions I came on your show to answer. Well, what kind if of you'd qu- like more what? answers about living light beings, I'd be more than happy to answer those questions. What, why do you go on a radio show and expect a host not to ask challenging questions? Well, I don't have a whole lot of experience with radio shows, but I'm, you know, I like skeptics because they raise really interesting, uh, contrary ideas, Mm -hmm. which ask me to question things. Um, But I've never experienced. uh, It feels like a little animosity because I don't agree with your opinions, and I'm not sure that that's a positive thing that I want to continue. Well, I'm asking these questions because I believe listeners deserve two sides of every story. You're you're the one who came on the show talking about light beings. You've talked about chemtrails, government conspiracies, cover-ups. So, as a reasonable and, and professional broadcaster and journalist, it is my duty to ask counter-questions. And Have if, you looked at my website or any of my documentaries, or read my book, you might be uninformed and misunderstand my I, abilities and what I have to offer. Well, why don't you talk about your abilities? My abilities include uh, the ability to communicate extremely clearly, the ability to write and publish books, the ability to create documentaries and websites. Those are very important, uh, highly 
uh, well, not everybody can do it. I'm just saying, and I'm not mm-hmm. trying to toot my own horn. I, I understand that, and I appreciate that. But, once again, all I'm trying to do is get the other side of the story. To ask the questions, the important questions. The questions that I believe our listeners around the world want to hear. That's all I'm doing. And I've answered every question that you have uh, asked as honestly as I can. And I'll continue to. I'm not disputing that. And I appreciate the fact that you're trying to, attempting to, present both sides. Well, there's more than two sides to in most stories. In every story, as a, as a former criminal police investigator, there are three sides to every story. His side, her side, and the truth. Yes, and I've been accused of crimes I didn't commit by these supposedly honest officers. Well, let's talk about that when we come back from the break. This is the Exxon AM, Rob McConnell. Elizabeth Eagle is our guest this hour. Her website, www.livinglikebeings.com. Send me your comments. Are you a believer or are you a skeptic? Emails, exxon at exxonradiotv.com. I'll be back on the other side of this news break. Don't go away. Broadcast studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, to the world and beyond. You're watching the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. AVS Media. You have heard of the Exxon? Now watch it on Simo TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like X Zone, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world, interactive online network, and much more. Tomorrow's TV today, Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone radio show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone broadcast network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Rob McConnell here presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnix, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God, It was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God. And finally, after the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. 
For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Exonation Elizabeth Eagle is my special guest. Her website is www.livinglightbeings.com. Um, before we uh, went to the break, we were talking about a number of things, but um, I've decided that we should move on, so to speak. Okay? So I'm very, uh, let me let me first say that I'm very grateful for your questions because they are letting me know what I need to focus on and uh, how I I could support my mm-hmm. claims better. So I am grateful for your questions, uh, not just the ones about light beings. I okay. just wanted to let you know that. All right, I appreciate that, and thank you so much for stating that. Light beings. Um, could they have in the past been misidentified or have is it possible that what some people call angels are actually light beings and what some people call light beings are actually angels i believe that's true um and people call them many different things and their opinions are their opinions so uh they believe what they believe and the moving footage from my security camera of this thing that looks like a dove and shape shifts and things. I don't know if it's an angel or not, uh, but I do know these pictures go back to daguerreotype cameras uh, because I found pictures that are daguerreotype and uh, different scenes from the 1800s, and those are included in my documentary. I find it fascinating that they have been appearing since cameras were invented. Fascinating. Um, have these orbs tried to communicate, I'm sorry, these light beings, have they tried to communicate with you? I believe they're conscious, co- consciously communicating with me every day when I invite them in on my security cameras and they show up. And that's one of the reasons I believe they're communicating. I also mm-hmm. uh, get ideas, intuition, that sort of thing that I don't know where they, those things come from whether that's just coming out of uh, my higher self or whether that's coming from the light beings. Uh, but I do believe they communicate. What are the messages or what are the communications that, that you believe that they're trying to get across to, to members of the human race? I believe they're trying to deliver a message of hope and support for humanity and the planet. I have not heard or don't know of any very negative experiences anyone has had with these, any physical harm. Uh, I know that some UFOs, uh, people have been abducted, but I don't believe that has much to do with the orb phenomenon. Now, there's all different kinds of light beings, and I think that it's like uh, different kinds of animals. You got your, you have your dogs and you have your giraffes, and they're all different, but they're all animals. Um, so I don't know if that idea is valid or not. And I don't know if these are angels or not. Uh, but there's been people that experience uh, angels that show up that do radiate light. Right. Uh, and there's halos back in the day from, you know, uh, many different uh, master artists. So they've been appearing for a long time. Well, I don't know if the master artists were depicting them, but the pictures of cherubs often have a circular face with wings. And so I don't know whether they actually saw that or if they saw orbs flying around and just assumed they have wings. You know, there's so many questions I can't answer and wouldn't even try 
because I don't, I don't have enough understanding of this phenomena, and it's unexplained, and so I really don't know what to believe. I just have an open mind right. and consider the possibilities of what these things can be. Um, when these uh, light beams have been around, have has there been any detected uh, electrical interference? Static? Have animals reacted uh, towards the to the presence of these light beings? I have never uh, heard of static, but it could happen in paranormal investigations. My cats do play mm-hmm. with things that aren't there. They get up on their hind legs and they're batting at things. I've seen YouTube videos of dogs reacting. So, you know, uh, that and the fact that uh, they, they scramble fighter jets to go after some of these things. And, you know, the Phoenix lights, I'm not exactly sure what those were. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. It does. Um when these light beings are 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 with you or are present in your inner presence um do they tr- do they touch you i've never experienced any physical contact and i only heard today of somebody's experience where light beings came, came through the window and burnt holes in the uh, covers they had over the windows cuz they were tired of the light shining through their windows. But I've, uh, the only um, material stories I've heard are uh, one by Corey Good that claims uh, well, uh, to be um, an informant or a whistleblower on the secret space program. He claims to be picked up in blue orbs and taken different places. The other story I heard was from someone that was involved with MK Ultra uh, since she was 18 months old, but back in her childhood, orbs would supposedly appear in her room, and she would grab onto them, and they'd fly her around the room. Now, all these stories are definitely subjective. They're easy to debunk. I'm not sure what people are telling me is something they actually experienced or something they think that they want me to hear. Mm-hmm. As a licensed psychologist, how do you uh, how do you equate this with the human psyche? Well, I'm I'm not real familiar with the human psyche or how it operates, so I really can't answer that question. All I know is that uh People freak out when they experience these things, and maybe they need to go to a psychologist. I know that I've been to, mm-hmm. uh, I've been for help, yeah. and you know, to make sure that I'm not going nuts. Uh, and they say that I'm not. So, yeah. and they're very encouraging because it's kind of an off the wall experience that I'm having. Uh, I, I I have to ask you this. Uh, my researchers. Uh, gave me the the profile that you were a licensed psychologist is that, uh, uh, were you no i no, don't I, know where you got oh, okay. that information all right then they my must... mom was a psychologist but i haven't oh. mentioned that to anybody no. okay um how do you feel when you see these these beings of light well i don't often see them without a camera operating um and when i'm taking pictures of them I don't see them until after the pictures are developed or after I look back on the digital images. Sometimes I feel happy, um, but when uh, I watch them every day on my security cameras, Mm -hmm. I just feel comforted uh, as if they're uh, attempting to protect me somehow. That must be a good feeling. Well, it definitely is, especially after all the... um, intrusion that I've had, Mm -hmm. and I don't know why those uh, people that did what they have done uh, are doing what they did, Uh, but I do know that I do uh, feel more protected and reassured about my safety because of this phenomenon. What did the police say about these break-ins, and and why do you, you know, uh, why you? Well, I I suspect the police, um, for some of them, And I don't report many of them to the police. The police have not been my friends. And so that's why I don't involve the criminal justice system or the police 
much in this wow. phenomenon because they can't catch these people if I have no evidence, don't have anything on film to prove anything, don't know who they are, why well, call the police? Because well, they're just, I, I called the police the last time it right. happened. And they're like, well, well, and so that's why I don't really uh, contact the police okay, about uh, these things. As an ex-cop, if somebody breaks into somebody's house, that's a crime. Uh, we would investigate it if there is a point of entry. You know, there's fingerprints. There's a, there's there's how they did it, and and I just don't understand police or law enforcement agencies who actually don't do that. Well, I don't know of uh, our police department doing fingerprints on uh, small break-ins that can't be proven. Uh, they have bigger fish to catch, I believe. You know, they're going after uh, people that are really doing terrible things, uh, and this is this is small potatoes. And I asked the police chief the exact same question, and he said, well, they get thousands of calls a year and just don't have time to bother with uh, the incidents that have been happening to me. Wow. I, I don't know what to say. I really don't. Uh, well, well, I don't know what to say either, yeah. except, and I don't really want to uh, talk about much about my criminal background. All I know is that police have lied in police reports, tampered with evidence, falsified yeah. documents in my case. And another incident happened that on, on the third trial, mm-hmm. uh, the third trial, a week before the trial was to be... All right, I, I, hate, I, hate to, I hate to do this, but we've got to take our final break. Please stand by. Exonation Nation okay. Elizabeth Eagle is our special guest this hour. www. Light, I'm sorry, livinglightbeings.com. That's livinglightbeings.com. And we'll be back on the other side of this break as we wrap up this hour here in the Exxon. Don't go away. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simul TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like X-Zone, Sci-Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. The new nonfiction book, Razor of Madness, is similar to cult movies like Clockwork Orange, Dragon's Tattoo, or The Other Side of Hell. Wayne Morin Jr. and Thomas Lee Howe will expose widespread and systematic deficiencies in this thought-provoking tell-all novel. Mind control rages among scholars in law schools. Human rights are ignored while thought reform and mental manipulation are accepted practices used as behavior modification. Dr. Louis Jolion West comes to mind. Media and public scrutiny shows that United States mental hospitals are in fact destructive murder industries. Razor of Madness Expose Novel details this epidemic through an in-depth professional and personal investigation. For decades there has been a revolving door policy that still releases killers and pedophiles back into society. The maestro of mind control continues to haunt America to this very day. Razor of Madness is available in paperback or as a downloadable ebook at Amazon.com. The concept of a new age has been around since the late 19th century, yet much of its original meaning has been lost. What exactly is the new age? Is it a religion, a collection of obscure esoteric practices, a series of doomsday predictions, or an astrological event? The New Age Chronicles is a unique, complementary publication bringing reason and grounded information to separate fact from fiction. 
chock full of valuable information to support you as we make the monumental shift into the new era. You won't want to miss a single innovative issue. The New Age Chronicles newspaper is coming soon to www.newagechronicles.com. Back everyone, Elizabeth um, Eagle is our special guest this hour. www.livinglightbeings.com. Um, my producer just gave me a very interesting statistic that people most likely to see light beings are based on the on a poll, and I don't know where he got these these figures. Were are born in the month of January or February? And I don't know if that means anything to you. I don't know if it means anything either, but I find that extremely interesting because I was born in January. Wow. That's, un- that's uncanny. Thanks for that, Craig. Um, super. Now, before we went to the break, you, you kind of said something about your third trial. And just before another date, the case was dismissed or dropped? Right. That wasn't on air. That was something I believe that I talked to you during the break about. But yes, uh, that's exactly what happened. The first trial, I had a public defender and was found guilty on both counts, even though I wasn't. The second trial, pardon me, I had a paid lawyer, and he went through 28 prospective jurors and couldn't come up with an impartial jury of six. So the case wasn't wasn't trialed the second time. But the third trial... Uh, the case was dismissed a week before the trial with no explanation. Unbelievable. It is unbelievable. I I hope that the um, Canadian justice system is much better than the criminal justice system. I've created a documentary called The Injustice of the Justice System, but I'm not ready to uh, put that out there because it reveals a lot of personal information about myself that I'm not quite ready to put out there to the public. Do you think that your involvement with light beings and your UFO uh, connection has or has had something to do with not not only the break-ins but the the criminal allegations towards you? Possibly, but I don't believe that's the reason for the interference by the the, uh, criminal justice system. I I can't answer that question. Uh, It could be possible, though. How often are these orbs present in in your life, and how often do you capture them on your video surveillance system at home? I've mentioned I capture them every single day. Uh, Anytime I want to go back to my monitor Mm -hmm. and look for them, and if they're not there, I call them in and they appear. The fact that they appear when you call them, this seems to be some sort of intelligent recognition of communication. Exactly. That's why I believe they're consciously communicating, but of course the skeptics won't take that uh, into consideration. Mm -hmm. I understand that, but I do believe they're consciously communicating, and because of other people's stories that I've heard over the years, they believe they're consciously communicating with them, so I... You know, I just believe that there is some kind of uh, communication going on. And the fact that they show up at national disasters, that they do disarm missiles, uh, I find that a form of communication. Communication is two-way. The fact that they respond to your calling is one thing, but do they try to communicate with you on a conscious or subconscious level in order to close that communication loop? Well, on the conscious level, I I believe that they're communicating because I've just shared with you uh, the reasons. I don't know about subconsciously because I'm not aware of that. I'm not aware of if they communicate with me when I'm sleeping. Uh, I don't know. uh, I've never heard, like, a voice 
or anything else, but I do believe that some of the inspiration that I've had does come from the unseen world. Now, whether it comes from orbs or my higher self <clears throat> or in some advanced consciousness that I don't even know or recognize, you know, there's so many questions I cannot answer, but you're asking some really good ones. Um, why do you think they're here? Where do they come from? <laughs> Those are questions. Uh, where do they come from? Yeah. I can't answer that. But why are they here? I do believe they're here to help humanity. I do believe they're here to help light the planet, raise consciousness and vibration of uh, the human race. Because, you know, we're about to... Uh, we're about to go down. The planet will survive, but uh, the human race might not. So I think they're here because they're concerned. Uh, I believe they're mm -hmm. possibly everywhere all the time. I've heard they can be as big as a galaxy, but there's no proof of that, absolutely no proof of that. And I've also taken pictures that look identical to cells under the microscope. I have no clue if there's a connection, but I just find that very interesting. The pictures that you've taken of these um, light beings that look like cells, tell me more about that. Well, cells have interiors, they have nuclei, they have... Uh, an exterior cell wall, so, and in my book I do document and show pictures of the cells and of the orbs and light beings. Mm -hmm. A lot of people uh, have pictures and have taken pictures of the orbs with similar, uh, like, sacred geometry interiors, uh, but the moving light beings that are magnified are, I think, extremely fascinating, and the ones that actually dance to music Oh my gosh, that is so interesting. And on my website, there's a clip that my friend Grace Butler, who's a contributor to my book, um, ha was able to record. They're dancing to Louis Armstrong playing Hello, Dolly, and it blows my mind. It, there's absolutely no way. This is trick photography, computer graphics. Uh, it's just a very, very interesting, uh, interesting phenomenon. What, do you, what would you say to somebody who would like to uh, get photos of these light beings themselves? How would you suggest they best go about doing it? That's a, that's a question that I'm getting a, a, a lot from my website. People want to know how I've developed this ability and how they can develop it. The only thing I can tell them is to take a, bunches of pictures and look at their old pictures and see if they're there, uh, because uh, I'm not sure how this mm -hmm. works with people's intentions or their level of consciousness, frequency, or vibration. I have no clue of how to, how to tell people how to duplicate what I've done or what my um, contributor Grace Butler has done. And other people do. Uh, some people do uh, get a whole lot more pictures than others. Some have never experienced a picture of an orb. They, they may have experienced seeing one uh, in real time without a camera, but it's, you know, not everybody keeps a camera in their pocket. Um, and so they've maybe only had this experience once or twice in their entire life. Um, others, they just seem to attract them. There's uh, tarot readers that I've listened to on YouTube, and for example, like on Valentine's Day, 40 different light beings showed up in one reader's uh, reading, and I don't know whether that's because of the energy that was there that day, but I also had orb showers on uh, four of my cameras that were infrared at the time, uh, the night of the presidential election recently. And uh, I don't know whether that had to do with right. so many people focusing on it. I don't know. Fascinating. What are your final thoughts for the Exxon Nation tonight when it comes to light beings? I just ask them to keep an open mind, do their own homework and research, mm -hmm. and, you know, come up with their own opinions and to believe what they believe. Because what I believe does not have to be what anybody else believes. I just appreciate their open minds. All right. And where can people get copies of your books and your documentaries? If they go to my website, livinglightbeings.com, uh, there are... Uh, 
the the videos are listed there. You can see uh, the the names of the videos and the mm-hmm. thumbnails that I put up on those. And the copies of my books are for sale on Amazon, and there's a link on my website to that. Right now I need to fix a glitch uh, uh, in a tab, but if they just scroll down to the bottom of the web page, uh, those books are there. Copies of the covers are there. They can search on Amazon by titles as well. 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 All right, we have to say so long for tonight. I want to thank you for joining us. And Exxon Nation, my guest this hour has been a rather unusual person by the name of, um, let me see, do we use the legal name? Do we use one of the aliases? No, we'll just uh, go with Elizabeth Eagle. And her website is livinglightbeings.com. I don't know what to tell you. I've been listening to her, and as you heard, she was got rather testy with me because I was asking hard-hitting questions. Why people come on this radio show and expect to have a la-la time where nobody, where nobody, where I do not challenge their statements is, is un, no, I, I don't understand it. It frustrates me. There are other shows like the uh, one that is uh, falling by the night with ratings drastically that, yeah, uh-huh, wow, isn't that understanding? Wow. I don't believe her one bit, Exxon Nation. Her research is done on the Internet. Just by talking to her, her knowledge of video is next to none. Taking a picture off a pixelated or LED television screen and then magnifying it just just proves that she doesn't know what the hell she's talking about. And uh, yes, there is a criminal record. Yes, we did run it. Yes, we did find it. And um, consumer, beware. That's all I have to say. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Modern Esoteric, Beyond Our Senses by Brad Olson, consummates the lifeology story about where humanity originates. It is the lost continents, the primitive wisdom, the mythos of creation, and the rethinking of ancient history as we are taught in academia. There is much more to the story than what we have been told. As this is the first book in the Esoteric series, Modern Esoteric starts at the beginning of time and accelerates up to this modern age. Future Esoteric is book two in the series and takes a forward-looking position ahead of today with an open and honest examination of the ET issue and various unexplained phenomena. To discover the writings of author Brad Olson, visit www.bradolson.com. That's www.bradolson.com. Are you or is someone you know struggling with addictions, depression, anxiety, relationships, low self-esteem, lack of confidence, grief, success, and prosperity? Do you know that your subconscious belief plays a big role in the outcome of your hard work? We can help you permanently change the beliefs that may be the reason for your struggles and failures. We care about getting you the return on your investment and the results you are looking for. We can help you be free of the limitations of your past and in realizing your highest potential. We work with people by phone and Skype. For more information, visit us at www.ritasoman.com. That's www.ritasoman.com. Do you think you have energy problems in your home? Do you feel better when you're away than when you're home? 
Joey Korn is a global leader in the world of dowsing who specializes in personal energy clearing and space clearing. He can help you create an ideal energy environment in your home no matter where you live in the world. Learn about his remote spiritual house cleaning services and much more at www.dowsers.com. You can get Joey's book, Dowsing, A Path to Enlightenment, as well as other dowsing books and tools, Kabbalah books, and Walter Russell books. Joey's work is really amazing. Go to dowsers.com right now. That's D-O-W-S-E-R-S dot com or call 1-877-DOWSING. That's 1-877-369-7464.